are we talking about transportation and economic development to uh, topics that are inextricably linked. And I'm very excited to have with us the CEO of Massport, Tom Glenn. Welcome. Thank you. And the High Sheriff of Worcester County, who also doubles uh, in his role as uh, the new chair of the Massport Board. Welcome, Sheriff Lou. Thanks, Tim. Great to be here. Well, a, a lot of uh, exciting things happening at Worcester Regional Airport, Massport. Um, Tom, maybe we could just start off a little bit, you know, for our viewers of, you could just, you know, what, what does Massport do? So we're responsible for three airports and four maritime businesses, but, uh, you know, the Worcester Airport is a uh, very, very high priority, and we're very happy with the success that we've had so far. Yeah, and, and with that, uh, Lou, you know, you've seen uh, Worcester Airport and kind of the stops and starts. 2010, Governor Patrick uh, signed some legislation, transfer agreement, yes. Massport's taken ownership. You've been on the board now for a few years. Yeah. As I mentioned recently, now the board chair. Um, you know, the progress that you've seen and, and from your vantage point, what does that mean? Yeah, well, Tim, you and I, you know, we grew up in this city. We remember, you know, airplanes and air carriers it's been in and out of the city for decades. But the commitment, I think, changed in 2010. And I think we've seen an extraordinary investment that Massport has made in, in the airport here in Worcester. We're talking tens of millions of dollars. And as you know, and, and many people are aware of, the Cat 3 lighting system that it's just about completed uh, is going to really make it impossible for anybody to have excuses not to fly into Worcester anymore because it'll allow you to fly in under any weather circumstance. So that's a huge step forward. And with that, I think, is just a continuation of the investment that Massport has made in Worcester Regional Airport and that the carriers are coming and responding and the people are responding. So I really feel this Worcester Airport, we've all watched it for years. I don't think it's ever been stronger. I don't think the commitment from Massport put, could be any stronger. And I think the future is just going to be extraordinary. And, and today was a great day, uh, part of that story. Tom, as, as you know, Lou now is the new board chair from Central Mass. You worked with Mike Angelini, the previous chair. Uh, you've been very focused uh, in making sure that uh, this Massport is dealing with a big economic development transportation agency that the Worcester continues to be top of mind. You know, as, as you've used your relationships with JetBlue, uh, conversations with other carriers, uh, what do you see the strengths uh, of the region and, 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 and how is it that Worcester's been able to grow? So, you know, I think uh, everybody in Worcester is familiar, and we've tried to educate people uh, around the rest of the state. Worcester is the second biggest city in New England, so it's a, it's a great market. And I think because of the leadership that, you know, you provided when you were lieutenant governor and then at the chamber and Mikey Angelini, you know, Worcester really stepped up. Uh, it was an experiment with JetBlue when they started the two flights to Florida. But here we are four years later, and we've had almost 500,000 people flying in and, out, in and out of the Worcester Airport. So, um, you know, results is really, at the end of the day, you know, what, what carries the day. And we've seen great results here. So we were believers, but uh, I think the results now are, are what's motivating JetBlue to expand their investment. And also now, you know, we're seeing interest from other airlines as well. Yeah, and I, I think that's a, a point that bears repeating. Uh, and Robin Hayes, who was our guest uh, earlier today at the Chamber Breakfast Club, the, the president and CEO of JetBlue, but he, in his comments today, said, T uh, quoted Joanne Garrity, JetBlue major vice president, who spoke at a chamber event several years ago, shortly after the uh, flights to Florida, or Orlando and Fort Lauderdale were announced. And she said the best way that people can support Worcester Airport is by using JetBlue and we're approaching 500,000 people. So people have voted with their feet. Yeah, no, they've been very, very happy with, you know, the load factors, uh, you know, to the extent that they want to expand their commitment. Uh, you know, I think it's been helpful behind the scenes. Joanna Garrity went to Holy Cross, so she understands the Worcester market, and she's a very high-ranking person in the uh, in the JetBlue family. So a lot of things came together, but uh, you know, I think uh, this this JFK flight is going to be a, a test again of you know expanding the uh, involvement of the Worcester business community. And, and with that, uh, you know, Lou, at, at our event today, you were the setup man. You were like. Uh, you know, this is the starting pitcher, then is the middle relief, and then you turned it over via video to Lieutenant Governor Polito to uh, introduce Robin Hayes. But mm -hmm. Robin Hayes, a great announcement today, and why don't you yeah. share with our viewers what it was? Well, today was a special day for us because Robin Hayes made official what we've all known was coming, but we wanted to hear from him the exact uh, starting dates for the flights to JFK from Worcester. Uh, which he announced today will be beginning on May 3rd. Right. So the flights are available now. He announced today to great applause that the flights are available. There's going to be an introductory fare of $29 if you book it in the next few days. Uh, and the commitment was that you'll be arriving in New York by 7 a.m. So you'll be able to make any connection flights yeah. that you want to make. So Worcester is now a gateway to the world. 
and the world can get to Worcester. And he said the flights, if you want to make a day trip, will be returning back before midnight. So it's a real exciting extension of what's been happening in this community. And Tim, you know, uh, the economic development in Worcester has been extraordinary. Right. This city is on track for really special things in the future. I really believe we'll look back at today as another one of those days that's a milestone in the development of Worcester. And, but to reiterate today, it's critical that we've been talking to Massport and to the business community. We need the support of this community. Yeah. There's no question, especially the business community. And we've, we've reached out to them and let them know if you are in academia or medical or business, please, the way you can show your support for this airport, and we know how easy it is yeah. to get to Worcester. You can get through, par get parked through uh, security and you know, onto your gate and into your plane probably in less than 20 minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. unreal, and you can get there easy. But you have to share commitment, and the one way, there's two words, buy tickets. Yeah, absolutely, and, and hopefully we'll see that success similar to what's happened with Orlando and, and the Fort Lauderdale, <clears throat> excuse me, daily round trips, and the significance of JFK, and it's a major, connecting hub and Tom and Geo World, I'll let you talk about that. So there are 70 connecting flights with just JetBlue alone. Obviously it's a major international airport as well. So that's huge. And then we you know we believe it gives people a full day in either Manhattan or Brooklyn if they're down there for business. So uh, we think it really taps into a you know a leisure market, a business market and uh, you know, really expands the opportunity people have in Worcester to make some choices. And there was really an important event that took place to kind of facilitate. Uh, clearly when JetBlue came with the two round trips, they talked about <coughs> continued improvements in terms of capital investment at Worcester Regional Airport. Congressman McGovern <coughs> was able to bring uh, President Obama's Secretary of Transportation, Ray LaHood, to Worcester Regional Airport where he publicly made a commitment that if a Category 3 instrument landing system was built, he would get the FAA to take the uh, uh, ongoing operating costs uh, thereafter. You guys stepped up. Lou, I think you were part of that vote. The Category 3 instrument landing system, how many millions of dollars? So it's about a $30 million project out of a total of $100 million that we'll be investing over 10 years. Uh, the construction is basically completed. Now we're just waiting for FAA to do the testing that they have to do to make sure. But as, uh, as Lou was saying, it'll mean that Worcester will have the same kind of landing system as Logan. So really it should alleviate all the weather issues that have historically from time to time popped up uh, because it really uh, creates a, a good opportunity for the pilot to uh, maneuver through bad weather. And that's a big vote and commitment by the board. Yeah. I mean, I'll just add, Tim, through this, that the, you know, the idea is that Massport, the first thing you learn when I got appointed to the Massport board by the governor, lieutenant governor, and I'm really appreciative of it, but I also came from this region, and I recognized immediately, Massport is not just Boston. It's Mass Massachusetts right. Port. That's what it stands for. And don't let anyone think for a minute that their commitment to Worcester is it's second to none. And this, the Category 3 system, what Tom just referred to is probably over the, over the decade, a $100 million investment. It's all set up for the future. And this is a step in that, that, that story. But we have other airlines, I know they're going to watch what we're doing here. And if they see the commitment from this region, which we believe will happen, and we step up as a community and support these flights like we have Florida, and we support these New York flights, I think it's going to bode well for additional flights, additional carriers. And at the end of the day, that's what we're really, uh, that will really put us over the top. Yeah, I mean, the Category 3 instrument landing system, as mentioned, allows planes <clears throat> to land virtually in any condition in mm -hmm. any major modern airport has it. And as we think about, you know, opening up Worcester to the world through this connection to JFK, the regions and cities that are thriving, a lot of smart people. We've got that with the college and universities, a diverse industry sector. And now, you know, with Massport uh, leadership, JetBlue growing, expanding, other airlines coming, commuter rail expansion, uh, Route 146 done now mm -hmm. for a few years. You know, Worcester and Central Mass is positioned well. You know, one thing I think that's important is uh, the investment that the public has made through Massport has generated private sector investment too with Retrix, you know, having a first class facility that they've added to the airport. Yeah. So we see what we had hoped in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, we would trigger some private sector investment, so that's already happening. Good. Well, uh, uh, Tom Glenn, CEO of Massport, Sheriff uh, Lou Evangelitis, uh, Chair of the Massport Board, we're Thank you, thank you all for both of you being here with us today and a great day and a great announcement for, for Worcester and, and the state and I would say uh, New England for that matter. 